who can believe it? Here we go again, 2024. I hope everyone had a fantastic Christmas and a happy new year and you got some type of break. So for all of those who are still on leave, I'm very envious. For most of us who are back on the tools and back at work, uh, let's hope for a fantastic year ahead. Can I start though with a heartfelt message to all of our members and their families in North Queensland, far North Queensland, and of course, in and around the Gold Coast and Tambourine, and even as close as Maruka here in Brisbane, where businesses have been damaged, businesses are still struggling with the effects of these storms, cyclones, and flooding. Our best wishes to you. If you need any support, please let us know. There are grants available, Commonwealth and state government grants available. Have a look in this week's uh, newsletter, the Queensland Development and Industry Development Authority. You've just got to apply to them, but all the details are in our newsletter. But if you need help with that, please don't hesitate to give us a call. But of course, our thoughts are still with you and when you see there's still risks of further cyclones developing this season, let's keep all of our fingers crossed. On to better news. We've reported to you a number of times the real fight we've been having with the Queensland Government about the Electrical Safety Act review. That's where, blindsided, without any consultation, the review recommended that the future servicing, diagno not diagnosis and repair of electric vehicles should be the responsibility of electrical electricians. We have fought that tooth and nail from the start. Some fantastic news. This week, the government released an update on the implementation of that review. And guess what? Recommendation eight was the offending recommendation. The government has agreed with MTA Queensland that they will not be implementing that recommendation. Make no mistake, that was a concerted effort. We coordinated our activities with a range of other industry bodies. We informed them, wrote submissions for them. We spoke to you as members. What you gave us was really material in that discussion. So that is a significant win. Certainly I'm proud that MTA Queensland played a part, but I'm really proud that our industry was able to really save a dangerous strategy that would have had national implications. There is now a round table. The Electrical Safety Commissioner has is chairing a round table involving us and the Electrical Trade Union, a range of other people, where we're looking at making sure the various training products and the like are appropriate in terms of electrical safety. That's something we certainly applaud. So really, really good news. Thank you for all of those who helped us and gave us information for our submission and our continued advocacy. We've of course got new ministers to deal with now. That's not necessarily a negative. MTA Queensland has already set up meetings with these new ministers so we can get off on the right foot and talk about the important issues and the important contribution of our industry. That's probably enough for version one of this year. See you next week.